thing you need to realize if you ever see something that you want or <laughs> maybe it's want and need marginal kind of thing realize that everything goes on sale sometime eventually everything's going to go on sale so I'll give you an example right now I really need without question a new dryer but I'm going to wait for the sale to go on and then they have 12 months no interest no payments rather than rush out and buy a dryer so we're using one of those wooden clotheslines that collapses in our home until the sale comes on which they always do every month or every other month and then we can go get a dryer with 12 months 10 percent off no interest no payments that's just an, an example but everything goes on sale one of the things you might want to look at is your cell phone bill we're all familiar with um, Verizon and Nextel and, and things like that but give me an example where I live there's this phone company called Cricket and for forty nine dollars a month you can make unlimited phone calls unlimited texting It's actually fifty nine now unlimited texting and uh, I happen to have a company that I dial a local number and then I dial the area code number for long distance that I get you know three cents a minute so my bills never over eleven dollars for long distance calls using my cell phone when I call out of state when I was with Verizon my regardless of which plan I got on I was spending a thousand dollars a month this was a huge drastic savings for me because I don't travel that much and then I did make a trip once for one of my episodes and I was able to buy roaming minutes for like uh, fifty dollars for so many minutes when I went to Texas and so when I was in Texas my phone would ring there I could make phone calls from there and then when I came back I canceled it I didn't need it anymore and then when I make another trip I can do it again I was there for two weeks and so I wanted my phone to work in Texas for two weeks so that's just one example. If you compare phone rates to other companies, some of you are under contracts. When your contracts expire or are about to expire, they usually send you out a notice. We'll give you a free phone if you'll renew your contract. It's a real carrot at the end of the stick. There are companies out there that sell all of the long distance companies. Uh, you just pick which one you want. And I went there and said, well, which one would you use? And they said, we all use this company because they're the best and they're the cheapest. It's $150 a month. Well, when I start traveling nationwide, I'm going to switch from Cricket to that company. But for now, Cricket serves my needs. But look at your cell phone bill, and there's other companies out there. You could save a lot of money if you just do some comparing. One of the ways my wife and I uh, are able to have our cake and eat it too, so to speak, is when our birthday comes up or Christmas comes up, we ask for gift cards to restaurants. And so we get gift cards to Red Lobster and uh, Chili's and all these different restaurants. And so when we want to go out to eat, we just hand them the card that was a gift card for our birthday or whatever the occasion is. And there's no money out of our pocket and it's just a great way to uh, save so when your kids or whatever ask you what do you want ask them for that even if, I've even asked for gift cards from uh, bookstores so I can get books without having to pay out of my pocket that I want okay as you can see we're in a national chain in front of the national chain called the auto zone it's an auto parts place and if you pan over to the right across the street if we can zoom in, you can see a Checker Auto. Okay. Now, the reason I'm showing you these two places is you probably have the habit by now of taking your car to have the oil and filter changed at a, one of those places we all know about them, Penn's Oil or whatever. And you can buy your own oil in quartz and buy your own oil filter and get a pan that has a lid on it and drain your oil and change your filter yourself for about $13 instead of paying $30 or more and I emphasize more at another place for them to do the exact same thing and check your fluids <clears throat> so there's a 17 to 20 or more dollar savings changing your own oil instead of paying someone else to do it for you and these places will take your oil and recycle it you just pour the container into their barrel and take your container home and do it again another time you have three or four cars that's 40, 60, 80 dollar savings. I mean that's a lot of money you could save by doing it yourself. Now I'm not an auto mechanic <clears throat> but that tells us also as another idea there's all kinds of things you can do yourself by going to these kind of stores to fix it yourself instead of paying a mechanic to do it if you have that ability. You know we buy a lot of pre-packaged foods like uh, pancake mix or uh, noodles to go with hamburger helper 
you can make all of those prepackaged foods yourself and you might as well get used to starting using your food storage and grinding your own flour. Put them in a Ziploc bag and you're good to go. Just put all the ingredients so that all you have to do is add the liquid ingredients to uh, before you cake, bake it or fry it or whatever. <clears throat> and that's a great way to save money. When it comes to uh, having to paint, sometimes we just have to paint the inside of our house or the outside of our house. Having been a handyman and painter for over 35 years, I just need you to know that a high quality paint you can get away with painting one time and can last a long time versus a lesser expensive paint that you have to paint with two coats in which case you have to buy more paint and doesn't last as long so don't cheat yourself when you're buying stuff to do home repairs like painting you're gonna pay a lot more in the long run and sometimes the short term too um, there's not a lot of these places around but I know there's some in California and some in Texas where you can go to a rent a tool center. I'm not talking about Hertz or Ace. I'm talking about tools to garden with or um, you know just a wheelbarrow, things for gardening, that kind of tool, uh, a hammer, a saw, uh, things that uh, the, the other companies don't rent out because they're too small of an item. There's actually places where you can rent the tools, do your hoeing and your digging and then take the tools back instead of buying the tools yourself. A lot of times we get in the habit of um, paying things and we don't need them to pay, pay, pay for them anymore. To give an example, uh, let's say you bought a car, it's financed, and so the finance company requires you to have full collision coverage on your insurance policy. Well, if you've been paying that or it's almost paid off or it is paid off, you may still be paying full collision. And the car, if you look at the blue book price, it isn't worth it. So you might want to look at going with liability insurance only taking the money you saved on your monthly premium for full collision and putting that towards your food storage and other things. Flea markets are a great way, uh, or swap meets as they're called, to save money by buying stuff you may need instead of buying it brand new. Always remember that we all like to be ready for Christmas, but the greatest sales happen the day after Christmas or the day after Thanksgiving sale. That's one of the greatest sales I live for. Get a lot of food storage stuff at that time. But uh, after Christmas is when you get a lot of sales, and so you don't want to spend all of your money for Christmas. Hold some back to take advantage of these drastically reduced sale prices. Now one of the ways that you should consider is sometimes it's really easy to stay in your old job when a new job could be better. I'll give you an example of my son. My son worked at Novell. Everyone's probably heard of Novell. He worked there for about seven years, and then he put his resume out there. They weren't laying people off. He just put his resume out and he got an offer and it was a really good offer, substantially more than he was making at Novell. Novell offered to counter, but he said no and went on to the other company. Well, because he had put his resume out there about 60 days after working for the other company, he got a call from another company. And he thought, what the heck, I'll interview. <clears throat> and so he did the interview while he was working at the next company and they made him an offer that he couldn't turn down because it doubled his income that he was making at Novell and the company he was working for couldn't match that in any way, shape, or form. So in less than six months, he was able to double his income, or he could have stayed complacent and stayed at Novell until they eventually laid him off, which happens all the time at Novell. One of the ways you can save money is to um, buy the food storage that you see on my TV show or on the commercials on my TV show. There are food storage uh, vendors out there that have no conscience and they'll put um, baking soda and then put a different label on it like powdered milk thinking you're never going to open it for 10 or 15 years and then if you do open it they'll say oh, oh we're sorry and they'll give you a can of powdered milk you know, or a case of powdered milk as if it was a mistake but there are unscrupulous people out there so you have to be careful who you buy your food storage with you don't want to buy it just because it's the cheapest you want to know the reputation of that company on craigslist.com which we've talked about in the past um, there is a box that says sell, so people are selling stuff, and in that category there's the word free. <clears throat> if you go to the word free, you'll see stuff they want to give away. You can go pick up that stuff and then put it on Craigslist and sell it. What do you think about that? Let's say you wanted to, it was possible for you to go into the firewood business. Um, you can get a permit from your local parks uh, service and you can go up into the mountains and cut up to four or five cords of wood 
sell them for $300 to $600 per cord, depending on where you live. And there's your business. And then we use the flyer, like we talked about, to promote your business of selling firewood. And there's another idea. There's a website called slickdeals.net. And on that website, if there's something you absolutely have to have, like a camcorder or a camera or something of that nature, they have a whole lot of things, even food to choose from. They're slick deals. And so that's a good way to save some money. You know, with Craigslist, um, which is yourcity.craigslist.org, I believe is the website, <clears throat> there's a lot of opportunity there you may not be aware of if you're just creative. To give you an example, let's say you come across... Here's a, here's a business you could do. Um, this person is selling a couch, or they're selling a bed, or dressers, or whatever it is, a kitchen table and chairs. You call them up and say, my name is so-and-so, and if you really want to get rid of that stuff and no one's going to buy it, I'll be glad to pick it up for free. And then you give them your name and number. Now, if it goes week after week or month after month and it's not selling, and they keep lowering your price and no one's coming to get it, they'll start realizing they have a piece of junk maybe, or they just don't know how to market it. You can go pick it up for free, have your own garage sale. Sell it for 10 bucks, it didn't cost you anything. What do you care? It's a great way to make money. One of the ways you can come up with, for uh, coming up with the money for these food storage items and emergency preparedness stuff, is start looking around your house. Look at all the stuff in your house. I mean, there is a lot of stuff, most likely, in your house. To give you an example, how many movies have you bought that you just don't watch anymore. Somebody out there wants to buy them, or you can tra trade them in for something else, barter with them to get something of value that you will need or want. Uh, music CDs, how many music CDs do you just never listen to anymore? And there's only so much time in a day. Um, maybe there's a couch you want to get rid of, or some clothing, or some bedding, or a bed. I mean, look around in your house, a TV. Put it up for sale, have a garage sale. Use any of the tools we've talked about and turn that into cash. <clears throat> this is what the bottom line is to this idea, this particular idea. If you're in an emergency situation and you're not prepared, that's when you're going to start looking around at all the stuff in your house and having regrets that you spent the money to buy that stuff or that you didn't get rid of that stuff to get money to get what you need. So take that mindset now. If this happened today, right now, what would I regret having bought? And what would I like to turn into cash? Because in an emergency situation, the odds are you're not going to be able to trade the DVD movies or the CD music for food or for an emergency equipment piece. You're not going to be able to trade those and barter those for that. The only thing you're going to be able to barter with is food, skill, and uh, alcohol and tobacco and chocolate products. And that's about it. Cigarettes, toothbrushes and toothpaste, toilet paper, you know, those are the things you're going to be able to barter with in an emergency situation. I'll give you this for that. Music CDs, DVDs, a couch, a bed, a TV, that's not going to do anything for you. So you can always sell that stuff, get what you need, celebrate and buy it again, used or whatever, once you're prepared. Keep that in mind. So this, this is one of the uh, ways I'm going to show you where you get to go shopping with me. As you can see in the background, this is Uncle Sam's Army-Navy surplus. Now nationwide there are Army-Navy surplus stores in all the major cities. And in these, uh, we're going to show you some of the stuff you can get. I've done a lot of shopping here myself. There's some great deals. This is where you get stuff, not food necessarily, but stuff that you could use in an emergency situation. So let's go inside and go shopping. We're going to start here in this part of the store. We don't, we're not going to set up special lighting, so uh, we don't know how good the quality of light's going to be. Forgive us on that. In this little section here, we have a lot of first aid kits, first aid supplies. Over here to the left, just by here, we have a bunch of books, how to survive nuclear events and how to survive in the wilderness. A lot of resources there you can get at this store. As you can see, there's a great supply of knives, machetes. Nunchucks, tonfas, slingshots. Compasses, whistles, flashlights of all kinds, flasks, safety goggles, binoculars, 
boots for outdoor uh, hiking and mountain climbing and being in the wilderness. Hats and gloves to keep your head and hands warm. Even a bedpan if you're bedridden. We got all kinds of Dutch ovens uh, equipment, mess kits, canteens, backpacks for putting your 90 day or 72 hour kits together. MREs, meals ready to eat. You got your shovels for digging trenches and axes. Real wool blankets. Additional stakes for your tents if you've lost some of those stakes. Five gallon gas cans for fuel for getting out in a hurry. You got foam for laying your sleeping bag on so that your uh, body heat doesn't go into the ground. Sleeping bags over in the corner here. My personal favorite over in that corner are big uh, military boxes for storing ammunition of different calibers of all sizes. Camo um, covers for your guns and rifles and such. There's even netting if you want to hide something from aerial view like you see in the movies. All kinds of parkas for severe winter if you don't have Jim Phillips winter clothing which I highly recommend you have. If you live in the mountains, you might need some ropes for mountaineering. You might not, but they have them. Even a gunny suit, if you're into that. So that's a quick view of what's available in an Army Navy surplus store. This is a national chain you may be familiar with. It's called Big Lots. They have a lot of fantastic deals. It's worth going inside and checking out. I've bought um, balsamic vinegar and olive oil and all kinds of things for my food storage at discounted prices. Even Wolf Brand Chili, which is in Utah, which you can't get anywhere but here. It's a Texas product. Anyway, it's a great place to go for towels, sheets, all kinds of stuff, not just food. Okay, this next um, idea is to show you how you can start your own business. And let's take, for example, the one I showed you where you're selling an alternate, alternative fuel such as wood pellets or coal. So how are you going to get the word out? You know, it costs money, make, takes money to make money is the old adage. Well, you could, of course, go on ksl.com for free, craigslist.com, put it out there, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, or you could make your own flyers. And this is what I've done for years and years to promote the businesses I've been involved in. I'll give you an example. Here's my little flyer on my television show that we mentioned in one of the ideas today. And so I'm able to get two of these on one standard piece of paper. And then I have the printing company cut it in half. Or you can cut it in, your, in half yourself. So that cuts your printing costs in half, getting two, four, or more on a, on a page. This one lady who does home cleaning just did that and tapes that to the doorknob and she gets about 10 to 12 to 15 or so on a page so that drastically reduces her costs. So what you can do is you can do um, delivering flyers door to door. It's healthy to walk. You can do it yourself. It doesn't cost you anything to go for a walk. Do it for an hour a day. You can do on average three houses a minute. That's 180 houses an hour. Times that by five, times that by four weeks. You get a lot of flyers out there for a very low cost and that's how you're putting out the word. Now, that's a very inexpensive way to promote whatever business you come up with based on the ideas I've shown you or something you've come up with. Let me show you another idea, a different idea, take it one step further. What we have here is a flyer on a handyman business, okay? So let's say you're the handyman, you want to promote your business. Then you find someone like this house cleaning lady who wants her flyers delivered door to door as well. Well, she can either do it herself or she can pay 42 cents for postage to have it delivered door to door, which is for a thousand flyers would be $420. Or you could, you know, there's mom and pop stores that, or uh, maybe a dentist, something like that would like to have you 
deliver flyers for them door to door. So they pay for the printing of their flyer, they create their flyer, you staple it to your flyer, you tell them you'll charge them half, which would be 22 cents a flyer. Now that's 220 bucks to deliver a thousand flyers of extra income, walking an hour a day, take you about a month, it's good for you. Now what if you got two businesses on here at $220 each? Now doing the same amount of effort, what if you got five? What if you got ten? And they're all non-related to one another. They're not, in, they're not in competition with one another. So you can actually promote yourself, have you be the first one on the stack, staple them all together, tape them to the doorknob, then go through them and pick the ones they want, and uh, you got free advertising, you're promoting yourself, and you're promoting them. So there's another idea on how to make extra income, promoting whatever it is you do, and if you don't want to do something other than just deliver flyers, and that's it for other people. People will pay you to do that. Here in Utah, as well as in Las Vegas, we have a national uh, furniture chain called RC Willie. And they sell everything under the sun for your home, from carpets to furniture, electronics, and appliances. They offer financing, 12 months, no interest, no payments, and all that. But what a lot of people don't know is they have a clearance outlet store as well, which is a scratch and dent kind of place or items that just aren't selling on the floor or have to be moved to make room for new inventory that's more pricey. So I've personally come to these RC Willie outlet stores and purchased uh, all kinds of stuff for our home from uh, furniture to major appliances, gotten the same six months, no interest, no payments, or 12 months, no interest, no payments that they offer at the regular stores. It's a great way to save money and other states have national furniture chains. If you ask them if they have an outlet scratch and dent place, they usually do and they'll give you the address and phone number. Great way to save money. Okay, so when it comes to how to get some uh, emergency equipment at discount price, uh, this is a company that I uh, get some of the dry goods that I believe in from. It's called Emergency Essentials and their website is beprepared.com. This is a great place to get on their email list first or their uh, mailing list and then uh, watch for the sales. Uh, headlights that go on your forehead, water purifiers, um, the uh, pumps that get the water out of the 50 gallon barrels, it's called a siphon. Um, there's a lot of uh, things they have that uh, are a lot of water purifiers that can go on your 72 hour kit that can do hundreds of gallons of water. So this is a great resource for you to be able to get things at a discount if you just watch for the sales and go for those items. And let me give a little plug uh, uh, while we're at this store. This is one store I really wish they'd advertise on my TV show, but I don't have a track record to, to them for them to even justify returning my call. So what I'd like you, the viewer, to do is email them or call them and say, man, you really should be on Reg McDaniel's Emergency Preparation and Cooking Show. So put in a plug for me, okay? Okay, here's another story, uh, the true story in my life. Uh, for close to 30 years, I've had my own little handyman business where I do painting and home repairs and put in crown molding and all these different things. Do tile repair, uh, brick repair, you name it. Uh, put in ceiling fans, switch out uh, dishwashers, you know, things like that. This is a Mazda MPV van, and before that I had a Chevy Astro van. And what I did is I took out the two back seats that were passenger seats, and I threw those away in the garbage. Then I put in a floor and shelves, and I've got uh, miter saw in here, table saw in here, saw horses, squares, tools, about every tool known to man. Just take a quick look in there. Drills. Um, sawzalls and all that. <clears throat> so I drive this van, it's totally covered, and I do this handyman work. And, and the money I've made doing this is what's helped finance the television show that I created. <clears throat> so I, I don't have a hesitancy in telling you this because it's the flyer business that I told you about that created the handyman business. I'd hand out flyers door to door. And I'm not exaggerating, uh, in Texas I handed out 1,000 flyers and I didn't have to advertise again for 12 years. And the only reason I had to advertise for the 13th year was we moved to Utah. And so I handed out a couple thousand flyers here in Utah 
and I was good for a good three years and then things finally started to slow down I handed out another 500 to a thousand and I've never ever gone outside of Orem and Provo which is five miles apart with these flyers uh, I've gone outside to do other jobs because of referrals but I get repeat business and all this my point is you could run your own little handyman business in your own little city just your city alone and never run out of business because I've tried to give my business away to do other things and you just can't find guys who uh, want to do this kind of work and deal with the public. So that's just a, a little story that's true of how I created the business, why I created the business, and it's a niche market. It's like the best kept secret. My flyer says the best kept secret in Utah Valley because you can't find a handyman. So if that's in your skill level, that's a great uh, example of what you can do to earn extra money to get these things in your spare time. Whenever you go grocery shopping, Many times they'll say, you saved this amount of money and they'll circle it with a pen or they'll scratch it with their finger and they'll circle this dollar amount that you saved because you shopped at their store. And basically all that meant was that you would have normally have spent $3 or $5 or $20 more if the things you had purchased weren't on sale or clearance or whatever it was they were on. One of the things you need to discipline yourself to do is take a look at that number that's circled. Let's say it's $20.35. And put $20.35 into a cookie jar or into a bank account, and that's towards your food storage or your emergency pre uh, preparedness equipment. Because you're not saving anything if you don't save that amount of money that you normally would have spent if it hadn't been on sale. So you need to change your thinking a little bit and realize that if you you wouldn't have gone home without the food. You'd have to have the food. And it wouldn't have matter what it cost. You would have bought it. So take the money you would have spent anyway and use it for food storage and emergency preparedness equipment. Don't just say, oh, didn't I save a lot? When you've actually not saved anything, you've spent money. The only way you save something is if you take that money you allegedly saved and put it towards your purchase of the stuff. Okay, we got a lot of traffic coming by here, so I'll try to talk really loud. Behind me you see the Best Buy Appliance logo. If you look in the yellow pages under Appliance Repair, you can find places or in your local newspapers uh, that repair appliances. Now, I'm not uh, suggesting you do that, although that would save you money. The idea for this is, if you need another appliance, this is the kind of place to go to buy a used appliance. You can get a dryer, for instance, for about $100. Whereas if I go get a new dryer right now, it's about $1,200 at Home Depot or Lowe's or one of those other major appliance stores. It could get you by until you can wait and uh, afford something a little more expensive because I know a washer or dryer is something you wouldn't be able to do without uh, short term. So this is just an idea and a way to save you money you hadn't thought of. Here's another idea. I don't really have the mechanism with me, but um, on the screen you can see how you can get this device. Uh, you're familiar with Duracell and EverReady batteries that you put in your appliances and your toys, all the different sizes. There's actually a device that you can recharge these kinds of batteries. Just plug it in the wall and recharge it, and you can go on this website to get that device. And so you can recharge this kind of a battery about uh, three times before you have to throw it away. And that's equivalent, in my mind, in thinking of buy one, get three free. Okay. Uh, there's also, from the same website, uh, you've, you've seen the rechargeable batteries. Well, there's a solar-powered rechargeable battery for rechargeable batteries. Um, and so that one thing about saving money on batteries can help lower your costs. Okay, this next thing I want to show you is a way to reduce costs. If you're like myself, I eat out practically every day of the week because of my type of job. And um, at the beginning of the week on a Tuesday, we receive flyers in the mail every single Tuesday. And you probably do too. And in them they have uh, coupons for buy one get one free or buy one at half price or that kind of thing. So what I've done is I've cut out these coupons that are places I'd eat anyway at local restaurants and then I fold them over like a dollar bill because people say well I, I forget them or something like that. And you take them and you put them in your wallet where you put your cash and your debit card is, your credit card, because that's where you get money to pay for the food. So that's how you keep track of them. So now it's in my wallet for the week and uh, when it comes time to pay I just take that coupon out and save some money there. Okay, So don't think using coupons is beneath yourself. That's a really great way to lower your costs. Using uh, the same principle in the next idea, <clears throat> also what comes in the mail, 
our local grocery store, our local grocery store uh, prices for the week. Many times they have leader items where they lose money trying to bring you into their store, as we all know. And so this is a great way to build your food storage supply by buying these leader items. And they may not um, be something you can store for 5 or 10 or 15 years, but by buying in bulk with these leader items, um, you can uh, drastically reduce your food costs and not have to go to the grocery store so often, therefore have more money to spend on food storage and emergency equipment like we've been talking about all along. And uh, so start reading these instead of just throwing them in the trash. That's the next idea. One way that uh, you can lower your food costs is to start living on your food storage. This helps to recycle it. It helps you to learn how to use it. <clears throat> and then you'll want to replace it with newer stuff. But uh, if you're living on your food storage, then you're not spending money on groceries. And the $60, $80, $300 a week that you may be spending on groceries can go towards your food storage, and that's enough in three to four months if you want to go that route, or do it for a, a couple of weeks straight or a week straight and then three weeks off. But you're saving drastic money on your grocery bill, <clears throat> and uh, you can start buying more food storage items. Um, you may not realize there's a lot of pocket change in your house. I found uh, literally hundreds of dollars. Uh, we bought one of these giant Coca-Cola bottles that you put coins in, and if you take those to a bank, that has a machine, it won't cost anything to run those through versus going to your grocery store that charge a percentage of the coins and you lose money by doing it that way. So you'd be surprised how much pocket change you may have around. Some people collect a lot of it and don't realize how much they have. Now there's one way uh, you can lower your prices significantly and this is um, this DVD is going to all 50 states so we all have our different belief systems. But uh, I've met quite a few people on welfare in my lifetime who always seem to have enough money for cigarettes, always seem to have enough money for beer, uh, wine, alcohol, and in some cases even illegal drugs. So if you're really serious about getting your food storage and emergency equipment, why don't you stop smoking, that's one way, or drinking, or whatever the vices are you have. Even pornography can be a bad vice if you're paying to be on those sites or buying movies or buying you know, magazines. Um, that's a huge um, outflow of money out of your pocket. So vices are the idea that you might want to look at to stop, cease, and desist. You'll have a better quality of life. You'll be better respected by your family members. That's a good way to save some money. If you have an, an infant that's uh, being spoon-fed, um, a lot of times you go to the grocery store and you look for good deals on Gerber's baby food or some other brand of baby food. But you uh, could invest very in a very inexpensive grinder that's hand-turned and grind your own baby food. It's more fresh, more nutritious, no preservatives. Uh, it's food they're going to be eventually eating anyway, and that's a great way to save money instead of buying bottled baby food. There's a device uh, we've probably all seen on TV called the uh, Food Saver device, where you put it in a bag and it seals it and sucks the air out and then you can put it in the freezer or the fridge. The food saver device is a great way to literally uh, lower your food costs and extend your food budget because you can buy in bulk and quantity, break it down into smaller servings, vacuum seal it with the food saver and that's going to save you money and you can live on that and use the money that you'd be buying on groceries like we said before to um, buy more food storage and emergency equipment. If you're currently employed, uh, you need to ask yourself, when's the last time I asked my, my boss for a raise? Um, it's sometimes easy to forget that uh, you haven't asked for one in quite some time or you're due one. And sometimes the boss won't give you one unless you ask. So that's a good way to get an increase in income to have more money. Let's say you wanted to go into a business at home. This will be another business I'll explain to you that you could do where you wanted to learn or you already know how to learn to do uh, refinishing of furniture. One of the things you might consider is in your local Salvation Army or Desert Industries or Savers or Goodwill Industries store, <clears throat> if you go there on a regular basis because they have new do donations all the time, you might be able to find uh, some chairs or a table that's drastically reduced that you recognize that if you refinish it, you can turn around and sell it for five to ten times the amount you buy it for at the thrift store. So that's a business that's at home at your convenience in your garage that uh, you could do and then take that 
table or that chair that you refinished and take a picture of it and put it on Craigslist or KSL or eBay and uh, you'll sell it. One thing that may surprise you um, that could give you an extra $500 a year extra income is if you have a large pet and you uh, adopt it away and get a smaller pet. That's one way. Or if you go pet free that can uh, save you a, another $500 a year just in vet bills, food for the animal, uh, different things that are respond. you know, if you have to pay for a kennel, if you go on a trip, those kinds of things. can save you significant money, and if you believe that in the near future we're going to have an emergency situation, you may not want to be stuck with that pet and have to decide, you know, whether it's going to live or starve to death because you don't have a food supply for it, too. Another business that you can consider owning uh, at your convenience is a house cleaning business. There are people that will uh, love to have you clean their house and for a fee and you can make money in your spare time at your convenience doing that kind of business. Another way uh, you could save money is if you were to be creative in your current job and figure out if there's a way you could what's called telecommute which means you actually work from your home via computer and telephone for maybe two or three days a week only or the whole week whatever and that's going to save you uh, gas money and time, and uh, that's a good way to uh, be creative, to have more money. Some grocery stores and uh, fundraising groups will sell coupon books, and they're like $10 or $15 generally, maybe a size $25. And in those coupon books, there's hundreds and hundreds of coupons, buy one, get one free. Um, all you have to do is use two or three of those, and you've gotten your money back. 100% and then anything beyond that you're saving money every time you use it whether it's for hotels, car rentals, restaurants and many other things. I'd like to challenge you as one way of having extra money to attempt to live beneath your means. Um, whenever we get a raise we seem to always have enough needs or wants to match that raise. If you were to really analyze your expenses with a uh, expense diary we talked about, you could very easily find that there's a lot of things that you really don't need, that you just want, but they're just absolutely not a need, that would help you live more within your means. So that's another idea. One of the things you can do on the internet is just um, type in the words on Google, spend less, and then search, or save money, or and search. Any creative little free uh, thing you can come up like that and hit search and it'll show you websites that gives you ideas beyond what I've talked about. The whole world's your oyster, so to speak, on, on that idea. To uh, cut your costs, both in uh, utility bills, food, purchasing, uh, car buying, uh, numerous things. So don't be afraid to try that to see if it'll help you save money. Um, you might want to consider taking public transportation, such as a city bus or a taxi cab instead of a car. Uh, you can actually get a bus pass that is uh, significantly less than paying every day you get on the bus. Um, you can use it as often as you want for a whole month. So look into that, see if that doesn't save you some money, if there's some place you're going on a regular time frame every day. And uh, when you're going to and coming from on the bus, you can use that time to read and study, learn a foreign language, if you will, all kinds of things. You can start your own business uh, selling sprouting seeds. If you were to Google sprouting seeds for sale, you'll find suppliers that sell sprouting seeds. You can get their wholesale prices. And because you've taken the time to do that, you become the go-to guy to uh, buy sprouting seeds. And you can teach people how to sprout. And um, that's another at-home business you could try. One thing you consider is uh, we flush a lot of money down the toilet. Uh, you don't necessarily need name brand toilet paper, uh, name brand toilet cleansers, a lot of generics will do that can help lower your costs. So uh, just flushing stuff down the toilet can become quite expensive. Uh, one business, you know, I like to be creative. So here's a creative business um, that has always been a fantasy of mine that uh, if I wasn't married, I'd go do it. And that is uh, become a private detective and then you go to different hotels looking for couples that go in there cheating then you find out who they're cheating on and then you give their spouse the information for money <laughs> and uh, that way you're not being hired by someone to find out if their spouse is cheating you have the evidence to give to them to take to court to uh, fleece their spouse for cheating on them I just thought that was kind of creative I want to share that with you 
you can uh, carpool to get to work. That's something that could happen if you uh, have a long commute and you don't have to use your car while you're at work. Yeah, your gas tank, uh, you really want to keep it above one-third full because the fumes cause more um, effort on your engine to pump the gas, whereas if you keep the gas tank more than a third full at all times, uh, you'll be uh, using less gas and spending less on gas. You know, we all have talents and abilities and skills, and there's this term called freelance, where you can go use those skills and get paid a little extra money on the side for someone who can't afford a big firm like the one you might be working at. So consider your skills and if you could freelance some of those skills for money or even barter uh, those skills for things you need. You may have a bad habit that you don't even realize but, or you, you think you're entitled to. And I'll uh, give an example of myself. Uh, my bad habit is um, I love to buy a refill of soda pop every single day, five or six days a week, and sometimes twice a week. So if I were to cut out that bad habit, uh, that's an extra 12 to 20 bucks a month in savings that could be used on a uh, can of powdered honey, which is only $12 or some odd cents, and something else, okay? Okay, we're looking at ways to realistically cut costs. We're here at Allison's Pantry and Pleasant Grove, Utah. You can see their name, address, phone number on the screen. And this is one of the places I go to buy uh, bulk herbs and things of that nature. We'll go inside and take a look what they have. Okay, we're here at Allison's Pantry. And this is one of the places I come to buy spices in bulk and then put them in smaller airtight containers for long-term storage. This is parsley flakes, for instance. They have a whole entourage of different things that you have to choose from, like garlic and lemon, uh, pepper, and this is a great place to come if you want to save money to get your food storage stuff. Um, when I was in Texas, uh, we had a scouting project um, that I did where we'd collect phone books and newspapers in the whole neighborhood. And we would sell that to the recycling center by the pound, so we'd collect several tons and then turn that in. You could put out a flyer that says you're going to pick up all old phone books and newspapers and magazines if uh, you have a recycle center near you, check it out first, of course. Get a big giant uh, truck and start going door to door because they'll be sitting out on their porch for you on a certain date that you said to have it out there. And it's just free paper to turn in to get by the pound. Here's a creative idea for you. When I moved from Texas to Utah, I saw this little trailer for sale at a garage sale. It had a flat tire and they had a for sale sign, 75 bucks. So I hauled it, it was only a block away from their house to my house with a flat tire, put a new tire on it. And that was 10 and a half, almost 11 years ago. And with this trailer, I have made thousands and thousands of dollars hauling stuff for people, hauling stuff to job sites, uh, hauling stuff that people don't want, selling it. Um, so you can have a trailer and just haul stuff for people and make lots of money. So you can literally make thousands and thousands of dollars with a used trailer that someone else doesn't consider to have any value whatsoever. Um, when my uh, great, my wife's great grandmother died, they had a lot of magazines that were dated from 1940s, and they were complete issues of all 12 months. We put those on eBay. I couldn't believe the kind of money people would pay for those because they're collector items. So you may have some old magazines in grandpa's or great grandpa's house, and not realize they're worth a fortune on eBay. Now we're talking about ways of either saving money or making money. One way to save money is, if you look in the yellow pages under auto parts, there's yards out there like pull apart or pick apart where you can go in and get a part. All right, here's another way to save money. Let's say you're in business for yourself. You have to travel, and that can involve airfare or driving. And then when you get to your destination, you, know, you usually have to check into a hotel. What if I could eliminate the cost of the hotel? There is a way. There's a website called couchsurfing.com and it's got over something like 6,000 or 10,000 members. And people from all over the world come and they stay in your home or you stay in their home free of charge. Most of the time they give you a guest bedroom, not the couch. And so if you check that website out, you could avoid the hotel expense completely, uh, especially if you're going you know, out of this country. Uh, it's guaranteed because they love to meet Americans and that kind of thing. One way to lower your food bill is a lot of times we uh, really want to go out to eat. 
we're addicted to that kind of food maybe. There's a website called topsecretrecipes.com and it, in that website you can literally learn how to make some of your most favorite things that you get at restaurants like the Bloomin' Onion at Outback Restaurant for instance or Mrs. Smith's Cookies that you see at the mall. I mean these are top secret Kentucky Fried Chicken the actual taste of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You make it yourself following these recipes. So try that website and you can, it's like you went out to eat but you didn't. You're making it yourself so you save a lot of money that way. Another website to check out is called funforless.com. So check that one out see if you can uh, have a little more entertainment for less money. Okay, this next one might surprise you. We're standing in front of a big old tire dealership. There's Les Schwab, Discount Tire, Sears. I could go on and on and on naming all the different tire stores out there. You've all seen them. So here's a way to save money that you may not have thought of. When you go to any of these tire stores and you need tires, let's say you really, really need tires. You know how expensive tires are. I know how expensive tires are. But I've actually done this. I've said, I need four tires and I need them used, not new because there are people that trade in their tires that aren't, don't really need to, but they're doing preventive maintenance or something like that. And they'll put them on for you for like 10 or $15 a tire. So you get four tires put on for like 60 bucks, mounted and balanced, instead of $50 a tire <clears throat> for brand new ones with 35,000 mile warranty. That can hold you through for a year or two when you can afford to buy the $50 a tire or more if that's what you want. For now, you're trying to save money so you can buy more food storage realistically or important equipment for your food storage. So there's your next idea. Well, uh, we're towards the end of the DVD and before I wrap it up, I want to share a couple of uh, two or three stories that have occurred in my life that are true stories, real examples. And I want you to know as a viewer that all these ideas I've shown you, I just didn't pull out of the air and think, oh, wouldn't that be great? I'd say easily about 90% I've actually done, tried, investigated, and uh, used. I'll give you an example when I talk about being creative. If you look behind me here, you see this little shed. And uh, I have this handyman business, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, an attorney called me and said, uh, I have a shed on my property, and I want you to demolition it and haul it away to the dump. Okay, I'll charge you, you know, 60 bucks to do that. So I went there and took my giant sledgehammer and got inside. It had spider webs and some dead bugs. It really wasn't in bad shape, but I swung my sledgehammer, hit the ceiling joist, and the whole thing just uh, didn't even budge. And I thought, wow, this is really a high quality shed. So I called up the attorney on the spot and I said, what if I just take the shed as is, put it on a trailer and haul it off your property? Because I didn't want him to think I was trying to get away with something, you know. And, and he said, oh, I don't care. Just get rid of it. It's filthy. It's dirty. We don't want it anymore. So my neighbor across the street is a bricklayer. I borrowed his trailer and uh, took it to uh, Salt Lake. And I loaded the trailer onto this low bed trailer and strapped it down and brought it home. And then I poured a cement pad, 10 by 10, and I painted the shed. And I vacuumed out the bugs and the cobwebs and put in shelves. And... Uh, had another bricklayer up the street who had a forklift and had him forklift it onto the pad for me. So my grand total expenses was about 35 bucks for a gallon of paint, um, the straps to strap it down with, the gas to get it here in the vehicle. And about three weeks after I painted it, after I had it all, uh, you know, all mounted and everything, I opened the door and there's a little logo on it that says Tough Shed. And Tough Shed is a really high quality shed that they sell in Utah that they show a guy on a motorcycle going over the roofs. Maybe you've seen that commercial. And this shed would have cost, in today's dollars, uh, they cost about $3,900. So there's an example of something I needed and got. But the reason I'm showing this story is if, if uh, I wanted to, I could have done everything I did, brought it home, fixed it up, and then I could have sold it for about $2,500 to $3,000 if I needed the money. I needed to shed more. But that's just an example of the creativity I'm talking about that you want to uh, try to do. I'll give you another example. Um, I showed you my trailer. I told you about, you know, I've made lots of money with that. Well, I really do pick up appliances and take them and get them recycled in my spare time. Just this week, I've made $300 cash 
doing that in my spare time. <clears throat> I probably used a grand total of four hours, maybe three. And uh, <clears throat> you want to take it one level further if that's what you want to do where you are, because I only pick them up in the area I live in. You know, if you live in Salt Lake, I'm not picking them up there. If you live in Dallas, I'm not picking them up there. So you can do this, all right? <clears throat> but here's how you can take it to the next level. There are people who repair appliances. We all know that. They repair dishwashers, refrigerators, freezers, and, and ovens. And I'm sure many times when they go to repair those and the customer sees how much it's going to cost, they decide, I don't want to fix it. It's not worth it. Um, I'll just buy a new appliance. <clears throat> so what I can do and what I plan to do is I'm going to call these guys and say, for every 10 people, you tell my phone number to. And my phone number is really easy to remember. Um, I will give you a gift certificate for free lunch if, if they'll call me to come pick up their appliance and I'll do it for free. And so, the, you know, odds are they're going to give, the, they're going to call me, tell me their name, tell me the customer's name right there on site. I'll write it down and I put down, they've called me once and once they've hit 10 times, I send them a gift certificate for lunch in the mail. Now 10 would give me around 100 to 200 bucks and uh, all I have to do is give them a gift certificate worth $5 for a free lunch. And all they, all they had to do was make a phone call. So here's another example of creativity. Let's say you're in another state like uh, Texas or something. If you uh, call some chemical companies and find out how much acetyl alcohol is in a 55-gallon drum, that's another alternative fuel thing you can sell in plastic drums that has a definite shelf life. And you can be the go-to guy to uh, purchase that from, mark it up to get a profit and your delivery and so there's another way there are businesses that are for sale and a lot of people are discouraged from even calling the number but one thing you take into consideration is you could work an agreement with that business owner that you take over the business pay a monthly fee without anything down to confirm the business is working and producing what he says it's producing and uh, work out a payment agreement that way it's kind of a creative financing if you will own another business when it comes to yard work, uh, like down in Texas, uh, we have the grass grow over the edges of the sidewalks quite uh, often. And so you could do a business of getting an edger, a uh, gas-powered edger, and just edge sidewalks only. Don't do any cutting of the grass or pruning of the shrubs or anything like that. Just edge the yards. It's just a unique little business that most people don't, uh, you know, they don't, the people that don't want to pay a guy to mow their yard or trim their hedges would probably pay you with your little flyer business announcing this is what you do to edge their yard once every once or twice a summer. Well we're getting close to the end of our 200 different ways to spend less money and make money to get your emergency preparedness equipment and food storage in 12 months or less. So we'll call this one number 196. You've all seen these storage sheds that are in uh, proliferation throughout the uh, communities where you live. And what you may not realize is that when people pay their monthly fees to rent these units, sometimes they fall behind significantly so that the owner of the complex takes possession of that unit and whatever is in it. Then they put up a legal bid that there will be a uh, auction and uh, people will show up and they'll start bidding, you know, $20, $30, $40, up to $100 for whatever's in the unit. And what they usually do is open it up and with a flashlight you can look around. They don't let you go through it. Uh, or in some cases, like in Texas, they would uh, just not even let you look at it at all, and you'd just be taking your chances. A gentleman by the name Mr. Leach gave me this idea, and uh, I wanted to share it with you as one of the 200, and that is uh, he and his wife would do this, and the last one they did, they uh, got it for $40, and inside was 30 mountain bikes buried underneath a carpet, and over $1,000 worth of tools that had never been used or opened with their original packaging. And so he would just list that on KSL or eBay or Craigslist, and uh, he sold three bikes last week at $300 each. And in other units, they found gold, they found silver, they found collectibles, and they found stuff they could sell. So this is a business that you could get into. You could contact the owner of this kind of a place and uh, ask them when they're going to be doing their next auction, if you don't know how to find it in the papers, and uh, show up to uh, you know do that to make extra money. Now, I want to say one more thing about idea number 196 that we just showed you, um, and that is 
don't be discouraged or have a bad attitude. We talked about attitude that you know you're gonna get stuck with a bunch of stuff to sell. You can always lower the price. Uh, taking the example of the guy who got the uh, forty dollar shed, let's just say that there wasn't really anything uh, of really great value in there, and he sold everything for a total of thirty dollars or forty dollars even, broke even. But the next one might have been the gold mine, you know. Uh, my point is you can always increase your price or you can lower your price and I've done both and I'll give you a couple of examples. I found some treks that had fallen off someone's truck in the middle of the road pulled over, uh, waited half an hour to see if they can't, would come and get it, they didn't so I loaded it. Trex has a lifetime warranty, there was nothing wrong with it I priced it at Home Depot and uh, if I were to buy the same amount of footage it would have been uh, $300 so I put it on uh, Craigslist for 50 bucks, and I didn't get a single call. So about a week later, I put it on. The, I raised my price to 80 bucks, and I got a couple of calls, but they never showed up. And then I raised it to 130 dollars, and I got five calls, and I sold it for 130 dollars. Point being, I guess people thought it was junk if it was 50 dollars, and okay if it was 80, and prime stuff if it was 130, because they knew it would cost 300 to buy the same amount of footage of treks that I had to sell. Another example is um, I had an item that I uh, wasn't selling for a while, so I lowered the price ten dollars, and then another twenty, total of twenty, and and it sold immediately. So I still came out ahead because it didn't cost me anything. Uh, you can't be greedy about it, and you can't treat it like you want to maximize the up up teenth uh, farthing of what you want to get out of it. You just want to get it and get rid of it and move on in a hurry. Right now. I'm more worried about finding more stuff to sell than being stuck with anything. Um, I only have about three items left to sell. So I do practice what I preach. Okay, we're at number 197 on our list. Uh, this is called the NPS Store, which I believe stands for Nice Place to Shop. And the address is on the screen before you. This is a great place. They have the lowest food prices in the state of Utah. So um, I highly recommend you come here and if you uh, go up to the customer service desk and say Reg McDaniel sent you they're gonna send me ten dollars for every person that does that so I'm gonna get a lot of free food so be sure and say that okay then when you bring your friends and they mention your name you'll get ten dollars in the mail and come and buy ten dollars worth of free food here too we want to thank uh, the owner of this store for allowing us inside of their stores you can see in the background here um, to give you an idea of what they have it's everything you can imagine under the Sun at huge savings so this is a great way to save money to have more for your emergency equipment and for your uh, food storage. Okay, I want to end this DVD with fireworks, okay? So for the last three, number 197, no, 198, 199, and 200. Here you go. I'm at a magazine stand. We've all seen them. They're at all the grocery stores and Shopco and Fred Meyer, etc. There's three magazines you need to know about. So when you're looking for a way to make an extra income without quitting your job, or without getting a second job, <clears throat> one of those magazines is called Home Business. In this magazine, there are close to 500 different ways you can own your own business, running it out of home, small ads even for the mom and pop type business if you want to run that. There's franchises for sale, all kinds of ideas. The second one is called Small Business Opportunities, which website is sbomag.com, sbomag.com. There's another 500, 600 ideas for a home business, mom and pop type thing to make extra income without quitting your job. The third one's called Start Your Own Business, which is sbomag. And <clears throat> once again, you got another five or 600 opportunities there. Each one of these magazines are about 595. So for 15 bucks, you can get over a thousand different ideas to create your own business or to get one that's already in existence. And there's how you can make some extra income to buy your stuff. Hope you enjoyed the DVD and we'll conclude next. Well, that's it for this DVD. We are done. You've seen all the 200 plus ways of uh, lowering your expenses, spending less money, and making money. People tell me all the time I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, and I say hogwash. It's a bunch of bull. Not true. The truth of the matter is it's just not important enough to them to do anything about it because there's plenty of, if you do a time diary like I showed you, if you do a spending diary, 
There's plenty of money and there's plenty of time. You just don't think it's important enough. If, uh, if you were one of those people, I could turn you into a liar in three seconds by just saying this. Um, if I was a multi-billionaire and I came out on the radio and you heard me on the radio and I said, all those who show up tomorrow at two o'clock get $500 cash per person, one time only. I don't care how busy you are, you'd be there. So don't tell me you're too busy because it'd be important enough for you to be there, okay? So things just aren't important enough to these people that say they don't have enough money, they don't have enough time. And hopefully you will feel like you've spent your money wisely. And if you just got one idea out of this entire thing that works for you, then you got your money's worth. And uh, if you're like me, I want to use as many as I can, and I do. So thanks for your time. Thanks for trusting in me. Thanks for buying this product. Don't make any copies. And uh, I'll see you another day. And this is really, really the very end of the DVD. Um, there's one key thing I don't want to forget, and it's kind of the core of what I'm all about with my TV show and this DVD and other products that I'll produce in the future. I believe, and I'm going to put it out there, take a risk, that the day will come when we're going to wake up one day and there's no commerce, no utilities, no gas to heat with, no food on the shelves of the grocery stores, and this is going to happen long term. And when that day does occur, <clears throat> that individuals who are not prepared are going to be looking around their homes, their elaborate homes many times, and looking at all the stuff they bought instead of food storage, instead of emergency equipment, and they're going to have regrets big time. And they're going to think, I could have bought this instead of that painting, or this instead of that larger car, or that instead of that motorboat, or that um, skidoo, or whatever toys they have purchased in lieu of being prepared for an emergency. And their children are going to suffer greatly. Their grandchildren are going to suffer greatly to uh, even a long and horrible death, possibly. And so I'm trying to wake people up to take a look at, don't wait for that to happen. Look around your house right now, and what regrets would you have right now, and what can you do about it to change those regrets right now? So I produced this 200 Ways DVD so you could realistically get your one-year food supply for your entire family and your emergency equipment in 12 months or less if you'll just implement one or two or more of what I've taught you in this DVD. Thanks for spending your money on this. I hope you feel like it was a wise investment. Go out and do something about it. Don't just let it sit on a shelf and gather dust. We'll see you next time.